Hello and welcome again to Backpage. I'm Jody C. and we're doing something a little different today. Usually we talk about books, but today we're going to talk about elephants. And the reason is this. My partner and I were invited to go with some friends out to uh, Wildlife Safari, which is in Winston, Oregon, which is southern and south of and west of Roseburg. We did that, and this particular trip included a private audience with the elephants and the elephant keepers, and we had a grand time, and I've invited them to come here and talk about their program. So this is Katie. She's from Wildlife Safari, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Good. Now, tell us, well, we fell in love with Alice, who's uh, this unbelievably sweet elephant. Yes. Uh, but you have, you have what, three elephants there? We have three. We okay. Have three yeah. African elephants at okay. Wildlife Safari. Um, Alice is our matriarch, so mm -hmm. she's the one that you got to spend some time with. Yeah. Um, she's 43 years old. Wow. She weighs about 8,300 pounds, mm -hmm. about eight, inch, 8 feet 8 inches tall at the shoulder, which is the highest point for an African elephant. Um, and she's pretty much your textbook African elephant. You yeah. look up African elephant in the dictionary, you've got a picture of Alice yeah. right there. Um, she's absolutely gorgeous. She's amazing. Um, we also have George, who we call our gentle giant. Um, and he's about twice her size. He weighs about, he weighs over 14,000 pounds yeah. now. Because um, I almost got a crick in my neck looking <laughs> up at him. Yes. Like, here's Alice. Oh, and then here's George, like that. <laughs> yes, he's giant. He's about 10 feet 4. Wow. And the amazing thing with George, he's 32, but males will keep growing into their 40s. So he could get even larger than he is now. So it's kind of a guessing game with him. Wow. We're not really Wait. sure how big he's going to get. And Alice helped raise him. He, she did, yes. Um, Alice has been at Wildlife Safari since she was about two years old. Mm -hmm. All three of our elephants that we have were orphaned in the wild. So they were born in South Africa and then through whatever means we're not sure, they lost their families. Mm -hmm. So they came into human care at a very young age. Um, Alice came to the park pretty much right away after she had been orphaned. So she's been there her whole life. It's home for her. Yeah. George came in about 26 years ago, um, and Alice did help raise him. When he came in, he was a little itty-bitty thing, and then we had some other elephants at the park, but Alice was one of the main elephants that helped raise him. So they have a really great brother-sister relationship. Wow. It's a lot of fun to watch them together. Well, so now, um, how do you know how much to feed these guys? They eat... <laughs> About 200 pounds of food a day, right? Yes, yes they and do. Does he eat more than she does? You know, he actually, he, he thinks he deserves more. <laughs> he tries to get as much as he can. Yeah. Um, but Alice does have a way of saying, you know, I am your big sister after all. Mm -hmm. This is my hay. Um, typically how the elephants get fed is they get what we term essentially a free choice of hay throughout the day. They usually eat about 150 to 175 pounds of hay every day. So we give them access to that throughout the day so that they're constantly eating small amounts of food. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also get different supplements like we have a biscuit that's called elephant chow and that has a lot of good nutrients and vitamins in it. And then we give them some other vitamin mineral supplements to make sure they're getting their vitamins the way that they should be. Mm -hmm. um, and really for them it's it's more about just maintaining. We don't want George to get too big too quickly just like with any animal, a dog, if you have a large breed dog you want to manage their growth so that you're not having them sprout up huge and then you can end up with different health issues. So we, we carefully monitor him. We weigh them regularly to make sure that they have a good growth rate, things like that. He went through a growth spurt about five years ago where he was gaining about 100 pounds a month. So that was, that was pretty impressive when that was going on. He's slowed down quite a bit now, so he's leveled off to be gaining 100 pounds every six to seven months or so now. So how long do you keep them? Do you keep them like forever? The elephants yeah. stay with us forever, yes. Okay. Um, for our program at Wildlife Safari, we have Alice and George who are basically our founding members. And then we recently, about um, four months ago in February, we brought in Tava. Um, she came to us from a facility in Northern California, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom in Vallejo. Um, they knew we were looking for another elephant and they were looking for a good home for Tava. Mm -hmm. And so they came and visited us, we visited them, and Tava came to us and we've been working with her with Alice and George and really they've just bonded together beautifully. They all get along. They, it's really, really fun to watch. They're just like old friends. You know, initially, whenever you're doing any kind of animal introduction, even with your dogs and cats at home, if you get a new puppy, you're always a little apprehensive for that first introduction yeah. when they see each other. What's going to happen? And it was, it was like 
old news to them. They just kind of wow. stood next to each other. They fell asleep next to one another and were eating hay next to one another, which is exactly what we wanted to see. And so we just, one day, just a few days after Tava had arrived, about a week later, we decided to just go ahead and open the gates and see what they would do. They made some great contact noises. Elephants will make a rumble, a very deep sound, if you can imagine it cat as big as an elephant purring. It's almost that kind of a really? sound. And they it's a contact noise. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay, you're okay, everything's good noise. Mm -hmm. And so they did a little bit of that. And then they just calmed right down and started eating hay again. Wow. So. You know, our little dog, you can't get, uh, we found a puppy. <laughs> we found a puppy. We had it in the car. Just, we, we, we hadn't driven 50 yards and our dog was like, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> exactly. Anyway. That's elephants are, you know, these elephants, again, because of how they were raised, they were orphaned, but they were raised around other elephants. So mm -hmm. they understand that they're elephants, and that's critical. A lot of times when you hand raise an animal, the animal can have a little bit of an identity crisis. Am I actually a person or am I an elephant? They have a little bit of trouble with that. Mm -hmm. But since they were raised with other elephants, they understood that they had elephant time but they also developed a very strong bond with people because people were taking such good care of them. Mm -hmm. And so that really helped bring our program together in what it is today, which is really, we believe, bringing people and elephants together to help elephants in the wild. Um, we, we believe that our elephants are ambassadors for their cousins. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, I was looking up things online and there's a, a foundation, David, like Seldrick or something, mm -hmm. like the David Seldrick Foundation. Mm -hmm which was set up to help animals, or yes. especially orphaned animals yes. in, I think, Kenya, wasn't it? Yes. Um, anyway, it's all pretty fascinating. And you were telling me that you have five staff members that take care of the elephants? Yes, we do. And, and so who does what exactly? Because you were there that day, and you yes. told us all about the animals. And I thought, how in the world does she know all this <laughs> stuff? But, and the other thing that you would do is like when uh, Alice would drop her trunk, and you'd say, hold Alice, and she'd just wrap her trunk around the bar. Yep. And I guess that's to keep her trunk from like smacking somebody. Or, <laughs> so I mean, why do you do that? Um, well, what we do is we always like to make sure that the elephants have really good manners. Mm -hmm. Just like, again, great analogy, your dog at home. You don't want your dog to be jumping up on people when they walk through the front door. Mm -hmm. You'd like to have your dog be polite and sit. Mm -hmm. And elephants are very, very large animals. So what we like to do is make sure that they have really great manners. And the best way to do them is have them be really well trained and mind the people who are working with them really well. Mm -hmm. And the way that we do that is mostly through our relationship with those elephants. We spend so much time at the barn with the elephants that we've really established a really positive working relationship mm -hmm. with them and they trust us and we trust them. That being said, we also re work with them every day. We train them every day and we use what's called positive reinforcement. So when the elephant does something good, it gets a reward like a carrot or a yam or something mm -hmm. like that. So that means that the elephant's going to want to continue to offer up that behavior. So the reason that we trained the elephants actually to hold on to the bar like that is for a couple different reasons. It gives the elephant something to do so that they're not just standing there wondering what's happening next. It gives them a job, something to keep them engaged. But actually the primary reason we started doing it was because we have a lot of children that come down to the barn and a lot of times we really want to make sure that those kids have a really positive experience with the elephants. And sometimes elephants can be scary for little ones because they're so big. Yeah. So what we've learned is if the elephant is holding on to the bar, they're pretty stationary. And that can be something that gives the kid a little bit of security. The elephant isn't moving very much, so I can come up and I can give it a pat on the trunk. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, again, we really want to bring people together with the elephants because yeah. we think that's going to make a difference for them in the wild. Well, you know, that, that was a magical moment for me to be able to put my hands on her trunk and just feel that yep. and look in that big eye which was so gentle and so kind and yes. uh, <laughs> anyway it was, it was really something. Hey if you're just tuning in lucky for you because this is back page again and I'm Jody C and we're talking with Katie who's visiting with us from Wildlife Safari in Winston Oregon and we're talking about elephants because um, we fell in love with elephants a couple of months ago and there you have it. Um, now, talk to me about the regular day. Mm -hmm. You come to work and mm -hmm. do different things have to happen on different days or do you do the same thing every day? Most of our routine is the same from day to day. Mm -hmm. So um, the summer routine is a little bit different from the wintertime routine just because it's weather dependent. Yeah. Um, when it's warm enough, 
starting usually in about late April, early May, um, we can start leaving the elephants out overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the elephants get to stay outside in the yards um, all night long, 24 seven. We have cameras um, that we can actually check from home. So we're sitting at home, making sure the elephants are okay. We'll also come back in and do night feeds with them. Mm -hmm. But with that routine, it's pretty straightforward. We come in in the morning, we get their chows mixed up. So those supplements that I was talking about, we give them a breakfast chow and we give them a dinner chow and it's got all their supplements mixed in there for them and they love it. It's delicious oatmeal porridge for them. They <laughs> can't wait to get their chow. Mm -hmm. So we do that. We go out, we train the elephants for a little while, work them on some different behaviors and then the real work starts. We start cleaning. Elephants um, only digest about 40% of what they eat. So that means 60% comes out the other end. Oh, boy. Um, so there's a lot of shoveling that we do. Mm -hmm. um, but we get that all taken care of. Um, takes about so that's about 120 pounds worth of poop, if not more, <laughs> from each animal yes. per day. If they yes. eat, if they're ingesting 200 pounds of food, yeah, yeah, mm. it's um, it's it's a it's a labor of love. Well, I mm. my <laughs> I yes. take my hat off you. <laughs> <laughs> we we love every part of our jobs, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the cleaning is a big part of it. So then once, especially again in the summertime, um, that's our busy season in terms of when we get guests coming in. So we start getting ready for our different encounters, our different venues, things like that. We have um, encounters where people get to come down to the barn like you did, where you get to meet the elephants, pet them, feed them. The elephants show off some different behaviors. Um, we give people an opportunity to ask questions, learn about the elephants. We believe in putting out a lot of conservation messages and making sure that people realize that elephants are having a really hard time right now and everything that we can do to help them is something positive. Yeah. Um, so we believe in really putting that forward, that foot forward whenever we do an encounter. We also have a really fun venue that we do in the summertime called the Elephant Car Wash, where you can come down to the barn and the elephant <laughs> will wash your car for you. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of fun. Alice and George do that venue for us and they each have developed their own styles. Mm -hmm. um, we call Alice our window washer and George is our pressure washer. Mm -hmm. So depending on which elephant you have wash your car yeah. that day, you might want to come back and get another one from yeah. the, for the other experience. Well, they both have their own particular styles when they paint. Yes, exactly. They, they sell um, these um, the pottery that's been painted by Alice or George. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, and it's and it's very distinct. It they is. each have their own style. Exactly. Each one, um, and the each flower pot that we paint, they're called Ella plants, and they're mm -hmm. they're a special little deal that we're doing as a fundraiser um, because we're trying to build the elephants a new exhibit expansion. And so the Ella plants are part of that. All the money that we raise from the Ella plant sales goes into a fund spe specifically dedicated towards that exhibit expansion. Um, but each one is painted by one of the elephants mm -hmm. and it comes with a little tag. It tells you which elephant painted it. Um, it also tells you a little bit about where the money is going, which is always fun for people. It has a little picture of the elephant on it. Well, you guys are building I'm raising money now to build a big pond yes, for them, and water is important to elephants. Very much so. I mean, they 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 like to roll around in it. They like to swim in it. They like to squirt each other with it yes. and whatever. Exactly, and that's where our um, that's where our car wash really came from. Is we know that elephants love to play in water, so we wanted to integrate the car wash into their world because mm -hmm. it's a fun venue for them and sure. for guests. But as you're saying, the water is really really important for the elephants, and they really enjoy it. Um, we actually used to have a pool. We do have a pool at the park that was built for the elephants, um, but due to some policy changes, we can no longer take them to that pool. So we have to build them a pool closer to home. Okay. So we're really, really excited about that. We're really hopeful. We're hopeful that we can get some different community members involved um, to really help get the project done because okay. we really want to see this see this happen for our elephants. Oh, I hope it does. Yes. You know, I was watching a National Geographic special one time about an elephant sanctuary in Tennessee mm -hmm. where they take elephants when they retire. Mm -hmm. And there was an elephant named Judy and she was retiring from some carnival and this tiny little black man took care of her. He called her his big girl, mm -hmm. my big girl. And he gave her a bath every day. And he rode in the big moving van with her down to Tennessee and he realized the next morning that this was the last day he'd be able to give her a bath. And this will make me cry, I cry easily, but um, <laughs> And she had misbehaved as a youngster and they put a uh, shackle with a chain on her foot mm -hmm. and he took it off and he was in tears and he said, I don't know who the first person was to put that chain on her, but I'm glad I'm the last one to take it off. You know, and it was all. <laughs> anyway, um, but the next night there another elephant came, 
whose name was Judy, and Judy and Shirley had known each other when Judy was a baby. And they trumpeted like all night and actually bent the bars on their enclosure trying to get to each other. I mean, they're like best pals, you know? And so the end of the show, you saw Judy and Shirley lying in this, in this pond, at the edge of this pond, and they're, you know, rolling around in the mud and they're squirting water on each other back and forth. It was so dear. So I really hope this works for you. Yes, we're very, we're very eager to make it happen, and we know we will make it happen. Yeah. For us, it's, it's really, it isn't a matter of if, it's a matter of when, um, because we're very dedicated to making sure that they get this expansion. So if people want to find out more information about all the projects you have going on for the elephants at Wildlife Safari, what do they do? Who do they contact? Um, you can go to our website. It's www.wildlifesafari.net, mm -hmm. um, and we've got different contact us sections on there. You can just click on the contact us and send the information in. Another thing that you can do, um, a direct email address is developmentdirector at wildlifesafari.net, and she can forward any information on to you from there. Well, I tell you, if, if people go and spend some time with, the, uh, with Alice, and it, you know, it melts your heart. It just, she's so, so sweet, so kind. It's just such a, I don't know, it, it's just so big, like a big honor it to is. get to spend the time with her. Exactly. And, and watch her and, but um, gosh, what a day. And that's really, again, what, what we really believe in doing because your experience that you had and that, that emotional connection mm -hmm. that you made with Alice, that's something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life, and it's going to make you feel differently about elephants. Yeah. If you're ever given an opportunity to buy ivory or to participate in a conservation effort for elephants, you're going to remember mm -hmm. that the ivory has come from a dead elephant, yeah. and that's not something that we want to support. If you ever have, that's one of our biggest messages, never buy ivory, because yeah. if we don't buy it, there's going to be no demand for it. Right. We're losing elephants, African elephants, at about 25,000 every year. 25,000 every year. There's that only just, a wild population of 500,000 left. That just breaks your heart. You and know? it's for us, it's, it's, we, we will not lose these animals. Mm -hmm. We will not. And again, bringing people together with them is yeah. a way that we believe that we can really make that change. And it's so important that we really make those strides forward to help these animals so that we don't lose them. Yeah. You know, we, we lost one in Portland um, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It was a foot disease of mm -hmm. some sort. Yeah. You guys don't have any trouble with that? Well, you know, it really depends on the individual elephant again. Mm -hmm. um, our elephants, we have three beautiful elephants. We're very lucky that they're very, very healthy. Um, mm -hmm. We believe strongly in a lot of exercise, a lot of stimulation to help keep them healthy. Mm -hmm. So like I was saying before, having them outside overnight in the summertime, that's a lot of natural wear and tear on their feet, which is what their feet need. They need a lot of walking, a lot of working on those feet mm -hmm. to help keep them healthy. Um, so for us, that's really what we look for is really keeping them physically active to help maintain that. And then that being said, we also do a um, footwork on them on a regular basis. We check their feet every day. They have their feet are a very interesting structure. A lot of people don't realize elephants actually walk on their tiptoes. Really? So if you look at the a structure of an elephant's foot, it basically looks like this. Mm -hmm. These are their toes, and there's a thick pad, callus fibrous pad cushion that's under their heel. Mm -hmm. So when they walk, it expands. So it's like they're just walking on air. An elephant mm. exerts less force on the ground than a woman in high heels, if you can believe that. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Their feet are just these incredible wow. structures. So what we do when we're, when we're doing foot care, it's very similar to a horse, um, horse mm -hmm. hoof care farrier work. Mm -hmm. um, they have nails, so we shorten their nails up with a rasp, like a farrier would shorten a hoof mm -hmm. with a rasp. And then the pad on the bottom of the foot is a thick calloused pad. Um, and they'll have tread in that pad, just natural tread like you would have on your sneakers. And that mm -hmm. helps them grip on the ground. Every elephant has different patterns on their feet. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we'll open up those treads. We'll make sure that there's no rocks or no debris that gets stuck in there. So we make sure that their feet stay nice and healthy. Wow. There's just so much to know. Did you know all this stuff when you... I had no clue. I had no clue when I started. So how long have you been with Wildlife Safari now? Um, I've been at the park uh, going on eight seven or eight years. I started in 2006 uh -huh. um, and I learned everything 
99% of what I've learned, I've learned from Dinah, who's our elephant manager. Mm -hmm. um, she's been working with elephants for over 30 years. Wow. And she's worked in a variety of places with a variety of elephants. Um, and she's a true professional and she's an amazing teacher. Mm -hmm. So somebody that really, and she's really good at teaching our, our staff. Mm -hmm. So foot, I had no idea about footwork when I started. And so mm -hmm. she taught me. She taught me what to do and what to look for and what to see. And as I've gone through the ranks and now I'm, you know, farther up in the hierarchy, if you will. So mm -hmm. now I start teaching people about footwork. Mm -hmm. um, and Dinah's still there, still instructing and letting people know how to do different things. Mm -hmm. But with elephants in particular, we're, there's, there's not very many elephant caretakers um, in the country, let alone in the world. So we're a very tight-knit community. Mm -hmm. We're very close to one another and we do a lot of um, conferences and meetings to make sure that we're really all on the same page with what the best care practices are and how best to take care of these animals. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes into communicating that. Mm -hmm. The Elephant Managers Association, for example, does a great job of um, bringing people together. They hold an annual conference and everybody stands up and you can give papers and presentations and workshops and things like that. And that's really what makes a difference is people coming together for elephants. So how, when you mentioned um, supplements and mm -hmm. stuff earlier, how do you know what supplements are the best for them, you know? Right. There's not a lot of elephant-specific supplements mm -hmm. out there. Um, elephant digestion is very similar to horse digestion. Mm -hmm. So we typically use very similar um, supplements that you're gonna see for a horse. So then you just extrapolate, a lot of times you just extrapolate the weight out. So while a horse might get this dose because they're a thousand pounds, you're gonna multiply that by eight because the elephant needs to get Mm -hmm. eight times that since they're 8,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, we've learned more about elephants in the last 10 years than we have in the last 100. Wow. We are learning so much about elephants and elephant care and what they need and their different, um, different methods for taking care of them, all mm -hmm. those different things. We're learning so much, just their reproduction alone. We've learned, we've made huge mm -hmm. strides forward in how elephants reproduce. And that's really vital information for wild populations that's come primarily from elephants that are in human care situations mm -hmm. because they're trained to give us blood. They're trained to allow us to do a lot of different things that you're not going to be able to do with a wild elephant. So we've learned so much. Get, how do you get blood out of them? That's, I mean, that skin is really thick. It's the it's, um, you know, it's actually, I, I have a harder time giving blood than our elephants do. Um, <laughs> they, um, they're trained to, to do it. So we take blood from two places primarily. They have a wide network of veins on the backs of their ears that they use for heat exchange. It's one of their cooling mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So that's one place that you can take blood from. And the skin on the backs of their ears is actually pretty thin. So you just slide the little butterfly needle right into the vein. They don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. And then you get your blood samples that way. Another place you can take blood is from their back leg. There's a vein that crosses in front and you can get it from there also. Okay. But again, they're yeah. trained to do it and they're it's a non-event for them, which is, which is really important. We participate in a lot of different research projects strictly through blood. Mm -hmm. um, so we take blood from our elephants every two weeks and it's banked. And then that way different researchers can use the different samples for different studies. If they're trying to look at this type of reproductive hormone or if they're looking at this type of hormone or this type of element in your blood, they have a lot of different samples to pull from. Has there ever been a, a baby, baby elephant there at the Wildlife Safari? The babies were the ones when they first came in. So when Alice came in about mm -hmm. 40 years ago, they were the babies when they came in. We haven't had a baby actually born at Wildlife were Safari. They, I mean, were they really small then? or had they... A two-year-old um, two is probably going to be about that tall or so, yeah. maybe a little bit taller, depending. Uh -oh. They're they're adorable. They are cute. <laughs> they just are adorable. Usually when they're born, they're about 250 to 300 pounds is mm -hmm. average for a baby elephant when they're born. So wow. they'll put on a pound a day during that first growth spurt. So, so now, once again, while, Wildlife Safari, this yes. is in Winston, Oregon. Winston, Oregon. If you're going south on I-5, you go west on... You take exit 119, mm -hmm. and then there's signs. You just follow the signs straight to Wildlife Safari. It's just Safari. a couple of miles yeah, west. Yeah, it's just a few miles down the road. Okay, and one more time, give me the website. Website is www.wildlifesafari.net. 
Um, we've got some different links on there that you'd be able to find. Um, you can, there's also a contact us page on there, so if you have any other questions or not sure where you want to direct your information, you can go ahead and use that. Um, and the other thing with this waterhole project that's really exciting is it's just phase one. Mm -hmm. So we are in the process right now of designing and developing what we're calling Tembo Trek. Tembo is the Swahili word for elephant. Mm -hmm. So what we're very excited about is the fact that Wildlife Safari has an enormous amount of acreage. We actually own about 600 acres. Only 400 of those acres have been developed. So we have a lot of acreage that's still left that we could fence off for the elephants. So that's really what this next phase is going to be. Yeah. Phase one is the water hole where we're going to be able to get the elephants into this splash pond and let them have a pool to play in. It's going to be big enough that all three of our elephants can go in there, splash yeah. around, play. Talk about water displacement. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, um, we're going to have to wrap it up, but thank okay. you so much for joining us. Thank um, you. And um, I'm Jody C. This is Backpage. Join us again next time as we take another peek at the back page or the back side of the elephant. Remember, <laughs> we're all in this together. More the same than different. Do your best. Thanks, Katie. Thank you so much.